Hi there, this is Trevor and uh, welcome to the session at uh, Practical Performance Analyst. Um, I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed the previous uh, a few sessions. Um, this session today is focused on the fundamentals of application performance modeling. Um, we've covered uh, the sessions on uh, the previous few sessions we focused on the basic concepts of performance, performance engineering. We've looked at uh, the fundamentals of performance requirements gathering. And on this session today at the Practical Performance Analyst, we focus on the fundamentals of application performance modeling. So let's look at what uh, we intend to cover the next 30 odd minutes. The agenda of the session is um, look at the performance engineering life cycle. Um, let's look at uh, what proactive performance management is about. Um, we look at application performance modeling concepts. What is application performance modeling? Um, let's look at why application performance modeling is important and how it might be important from the perspective of the projects that, that you work on, how it might be relevant to you. <clears throat> let's look at a holistic view of performance. What does performance mean um, when looked at from <clears throat> a software performance engineer standpoint? What does it mean when, it, when you look at it from an infrastructure guy standpoint? Um, let's look at the process that you would go about if you intended to conduct um, um, an engagement of application if you intended to basically model performance of an application let's look at the techniques for application performance modeling let's look at the different um, we'll summarize and look at uh, um, <coughs> the different statistical and mathematical techniques involved in performance modeling and then we'll summarize we'll close up by looking at the challenges involved the deliverables and the resources and tools available to you for purposes of performance modeling so in a sense, we've got a lot packed into the next 30 minutes. Um, stay focused and uh, please feel free to write to us with any questions or any clarifications that you guys may have. So um, for those of you who um, have seen this for the first time, the performance engineering life cycle is a set of tasks that are aligned with the uh, corresponding tasks across the development life cycle. Now the performance life cycle consists of a set of tasks, techniques, um, roles that are focused on addressing the non-functional requirements. The performance engineering life cycle um, is an, uh, performance engineering is an ongoing process. Performance engineering is aimed at ensuring that the application meets its non-functional requirements. Um, and as part of the session today, our focus is on the uh, performance modeling part or the design for performance and performance modeling wherein we focus on using performance modeling techniques um, towards validating the non-functional requirements, towards validating the design assumptions, towards validating the infrastructure assumptions at an early stage. So in a nutshell, performance engineering is a set of processes, uh, roles, techniques, skills that address, that are aimed at addressing non-functional requirements across the development life cycle. And, and performance engineering includes a set of processes for each corresponding process across the software development life cycle. So let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so quickly, I mean, we've covered this before in our previous uh, tutorials, but um, let's quickly look at proactive performance management. So proactive performance management is the concept of addressing performance on a proactive in a proactive manner, rather than waiting for things to go pear-shaped in production, rather than waiting for applications to um, to basic to start um, breaching their SLAs in production. You have a proact you you are proactive in terms of setting up a performance management process that aims at. Um, a measuring performance that aims at understanding performance that aims at addressing performance um, before your applications go pear-shaped. Uh, proactive performance consists of different aspects, consists of different uh, activities across the development life cycle. Um, at requirements analysis, you, you, you do your non-functional requirements analysis. Um, at, at modeling and at, at build, at, sorry, at design, you're focused on performance modeling um, and capacity planning towards validating your application design, your infrastructure design. At build, you're focused on build optimization, you're focused on tuning of the application, you're focused on unit performance tests. At, at test stage, at SIT and UAT, you're focused on performance testing the application and validating your non-functional requirements. Um, before go live, you've instrumented monitoring of the application 
um, um, so in, in the expectation that you capture the relevant business workload and infrastructure workload performance metrics and at go live you capture the requisite performance metrics so proactive performance management is a set of activities involved is a set of activities across the software development life cycle um, which are focused on addressing performance in a proactive manner so what is application performance modeling um, and, and let's let's under, let's spend a few minutes talking about this let's spend a few minutes understanding application performance modeling in a little bit more detail so performance modeling is the art of forecasting application performance using a combination of different modeling techniques so as i mentioned as i was mentioning to you earlier um, performance modeling um, is <coughs> performance modeling includes a set of tasks that you basically perform at the design stage um, with the objective of validating your different assumptions so performance modeling is the art of forecasting application performance using a combination of different modeling techniques and the modeling techniques we will look at very soon but again the objective over here is to use a set of techniques to that to forecast the application performance to forecast what the potential performance of the application would be Performance modeling gives you the ability to validate application architecture and design assumptions from a non-functional requirement standpoint. Um, performance modeling gives you the ability to perform what-if analysis for different design assumptions and identify a suitable design and identify suitable design patterns that meet your non-functional requirements. So basically, performance modeling is a set of techniques that you could use to validate your design assumptions, validate um, a different application architectures and application designs, um, use diff a combination of uh, uh, modeling techniques to, to understand what the potential performance issues in the application could be with the objective of validating your non-functional requirements at the design stage. So application performance modeling basically gives you the ability to perform a lot of what-if analysis at design stage rather than waiting for the performance bottlenecks to be built into the application architecture. Rather than waiting for the application uh, bottlenecks to be built into the application code, um, you've got the ability as a practical performance analyst to use a combination of different modeling techniques at the design stage to validate the application performance. And that's phenomenal. Um, it's unfortunate that most um, um, a performance engineers or performance so-called performance testers who claim to be performance engineers don't really have do, do not want to uh, probably don't invest the time and energy in understanding performance modeling in a lot more detail um, and, and, uh, and, and through these sessions we hope to change all of that um, the performance modeling offers a set of techniques which are pretty simple to use um, and, 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 and you can use these techniques as well to validate your application designs validate your uh, design assumptions early on performance modeling also gives you the ability to validate your infrastructure specifications from a non-functional requirement standpoint so at the design stage um, um, you are focused on designing an application that meets your functional and non-functional requirements at the design stage you're also focused on identifying the um, overall infrastructure capacity required for your application to meet its non-functional requirements. You could use performance modeling as um, a means of validating those non-functional requirements, as a means of validating if the capacity assumptions um, that you made will uh, enable you to meet your non-functional requirements. Performance modeling should be initially performed at design to validate design specifications. These models can then be refined as you move from design into build, into performance test, and then into production, where you could use enhanced performance modeling techniques to predict the application performance with greater accuracy. So at design stage, the amount of information available to you is in much a lot of assumptions are made around the application performance, the application design, simply because the code's not available, simply because you haven't seen the application in action. So you use a whole, you, you could use a set of modeling techniques to forecast the modeling, to forecast the performance of the application. And as you move from um, design into build, from build into test, you could, you, you have the ability to enhance the performance models, to enhance the modeling techniques, to be able to predict performance with greater accuracy. 
Performance modeling is one of the options available to you as a practical performance analyst to proactively predict application performance and determine infrastructure capacity impacts before the code actually before the code is actually deployed into production. So performance modeling is gives you the ability to forecast application performance um, way before the application is built. It gives you the ability to, to validate your design assumptions, your architectural assumptions, your infrastructure capacity assumptions early on. You've got the ability to perform word of analysis, validate your basic assumptions, go back to the design teams and provide recommendations, um, tweak the designs and make changes before it's too late. So why is application performance modeling important? Now based on what we've said, you would have realized that performance modeling offers you a whole lot of techniques um, with the objective, of course, of addressing performance proactively early on in the development cycle. So to summarize the takeaway, summarize the learning or summarize the benefit based on what we've discussed on, on, on the earlier slide, um, performance modeling gives you the ability to validate your design decisions early in the development life cycle. Performance modeling gives you the ability to validate infrastructure capacity assumptions early in the procurement cycle. Performance modeling gives you the ability to forecast infrastructure capacity impacts for increase in business workload. Now let's just focus on these three uh, in initial three points. We've said performance modeling gives you the ability to validate design decisions early in the software development cycle. Definitely, you can use performance model. You can use models to uh, to forecast the uh, to mo to rep to mo to forecast the performance of the application, um, and 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 perform what if anal an analysis to understand if uh, the. Um, um, if, if the application architecture or if the designs that you've chosen um, are appropriate in helping you meet the non-functional requirements. Similarly, from a capacity perspective, you could uh, use performance modeling techniques to validate the performance of the application early on um, to, to understand um, if the uh, uh, given infrastructure capacity if the capacity that you've chosen from an infrastructure standpoint would allow you to meet your non-functional requirements. Similarly, performance modeling has got numerous advantages at, uh, uh, for an application that has already gone live and has a lot of development uh, in progress. Before, the before you release code into the application environment, before you, you, you release code um, into the production environment, you could use performance modeling techniques to validate change in performance to understand the change in performance for the given application. So performance modeling offers you a set of techniques which give you the ability to understand, to forecast, to predict um, the behavior of the application um, before the uh, before you even write a before you even write a line of code. And that's pretty much uh, what you could do using a combination of different performance modeling techniques. Performance modeling techniques, again, are no rocket science. There are a whole host of modeling techniques available out there. And in the next couple of slides, we'll talk to you about your different options and the different tools available to you um, to perform performance modeling. So performance modeling also gives you the ability to work with a customer proactively on procuring additional infrastructure to meet growth in business workload. Now, obviously, because you have the ability to forecast uh, performance for the application you have the ability to work with the customer proactively in identifying um, potential issues due to ch increase in business workload um, and increase in business workload could basically um, um, have a negative impact of on performance of the system as a result you would want to go back to the customer um, and work with the customer in identifying additional infrastructure requirements. So performance modeling techniques give you the ability to understand application performance well in advance. It gives you the ability to forecast application performance for increase in business workload. Uh, it gives you the ability to be more proactive um, in predicting um, infrastructure requirements and gives you the opportunity therefore to work with the customer proactively in procuring additional infrastructure. <coughs> So performance modeling gives you the ability to forecast changes in application performance before the application is even deployed in production. It gives you the ability to forecast performance issues early 
in the software development lifecycle. And performance modeling offers a suite of techniques that can be used to proactively predict and manage application performance across the software development lifecycle, from design to build to SVD to production. So holistic view of performance, and uh, there's a reason why I put this out here. Um, you see the um, the arrow that the arrow that's going upwards that basically shows you the infrastructure, traditional infrastructure view of performance. And you've got the uh, arrow that's going downwards that, that shows you the application view of performance. Now, from a performance engineer standpoint, from a in, from uh, uh, from 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 a practical performance engineer standpoint, from a practical performance analyst standpoint, your key concern is the ability of the application to meet its non-functional requirements. And yes, at the end of the day, you are definitely concerned about the infrastructure performance metrics as well. Um, but it's important that as a practical performance analyst, you are um, focused on addressing performance from an end customer standpoint. And the end customer's view of performance is is the transactional performance view, which is the pit, which is basically the metrics right at the top of the pyramid. So the holistic view of performance basically recommends that you address performance. You, your view of performance should include transactional view, which basically is the transactional view of performance with regards to res response times, transactional response times, transactional availability. Um, then the application performance, which is the next tier, which is the ability of the application to process a, a, a given set of orders in a given time interval or a given set of messages or a given set of transactions within a particular time interval um, and of course this would be based on the non-functional requirements that you define and obviously next would basically be the ability of the underlying infrastructure to be able to cope with the application performance that it needs to deliver um, and eventually the network performance um, underlying all of that so a holistic view of performance requires you to view performance um, uh, uh, as an inverted pyramid it, it requires you to basically look at performance from an end customer perspective a transactional standpoint look at it from an application performance standpoint look at it from an infrastructure performance standpoint and look at it from a network performance standpoint no doubt about it each one of these tiers are highly critical for you to be able to meet the end customer goals to be able to deliver your non-functional requirements however it's important that you address performance across each one of these tiers. Um, no single tier is more important than the other. No single tier, um, if addressed in, in isolation, would, would allow you to meet your overall NFRs, your overall non-functional requirements. However, you need to focus on addressing performance across these different tiers. Now, one of the reasons of um, introducing you to the holistic view of performance was to basically let you know or basically talk to you about the importance of or basically your ability to model performance across these different tiers using a combination of different performance models. Now, performance modeling techniques could can be can get really complicated. You, uh, uh, as far as um, a modeling is concerned, <coughs> modeling tutorials. Uh, this isn't a modeling tutorial. Rather, this is an introduction to the concepts of performance modeling techniques um, and use a performance modeling. Um, but however, performance modeling uh, requires you to look at performance from an end-to-end -end perspective. Now you can choose to model performance for any one of these tiers, any one of the metrics within a given tier, or model performance for the system as a whole. So performance modeling techniques can be used to model performance um, and provide you a holistic view of performance, or it, you could use performance modeling techniques to validate performance for a individual tier. So let's look at the performance modeling process um, and, and what the performance modeling process has in store for you. The performance modeling process generally starts off with understanding the business objectives, understanding the program goals, <coughs> reviewing your business requirements documents, understanding what the business requirements are all about, and documenting your non-functional requirements. So the first three steps are very critical in understanding the business objectives, the program goals, what is it the program intends to achieve, what is it the business intends to achieve, what are the objectives of the overall program, um, what are we trying to achieve, what are the time frames involved. 
the business requirements document of the BRD in short should give you a good understanding of the solution, good understanding of what's being trying, what the business is trying to achieve, what, what the overall program requirements are. And your documenting of the non-functional requirements is essential. So it's essential to basically communicate the overall non-functional requirements that you intend to deliver for the overall business, uh, 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 for the overall functionality that's documented in the BRD, the business requirements document. Now, once you've documented your non-functional requirements, um, you move on to then working with the application design teams in reviewing the application designs. You review the infrastructure capacity designs at this stage, um, and again aligned with the software development lifecycle. The, uh, this, this stage is focused on reviewing the overall infrastructure designs, you're reviewing the overall application designs. Given the uh, uh, modeling techniques available to you, you have the ability to validate um, the application performance, um, uh, validate the infrastructure uh, assumptions that you've made. So you create your uh, performance models based on a combination of analytical or simulation models. Um, there are <coughs> modeling techniques available out there can be classified broadly into statistical modeling techniques, analytical modeling techniques or simulation modeling techniques. Now analytical modeling techniques can are also called mathematical modeling techniques but basically there are three different buckets. You've got statistical modeling techniques, analytical modeling techniques and simulation modeling techniques. Um, and at this stage given your understanding of the application design given your understanding of the infrastructure capacity you should have the ability to decide um, which modeling techniques are are best suited for your engagement or for your pro uh, project um, at this stage <coughs> given the available given the data available you have a combination of you could basically use a combination of analytical um, or simulation modeling techniques to validate performance of the application you build your performance models, you validate the performance models, you execute the performance models for different what if scenarios, um, tweak the models, uh, validate the different design assumptions, validate the in, uh, architecture assumptions, validate the infrastructure capacity assumptions, go back to your um, um, design teams, tweak the applications, come back with recommendations, provide them recommendations, come back with um, a, a whole different set of parameters, tweak the models, rerun them again, document your learning, um, document the uh, 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 modeling process, um, 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 rerun the modeling process for different values, uh, for uh, rerun the, the modeling process for different architectural assumptions, for different infrastructure capacity assumptions until you met your non-functional requirements. Eventually document your learning <coughs> Um, um, based on the what if analysis and provide your recommendations to the application design and infrastructure design teams. So basically your modeling techniques is you, you use a combination of statistical uh, sorry you use a combination of analytical and simulation modeling techniques at this stage at the design stage to validate your application architectural assumptions, your design assumptions, your infrastructure capacity designs um, um, and and, and, and understand if, if the assumptions that you made will allow you to meet your non-functional requirements um, and you tweak the designs, you tweak your design assumptions, tweak your infrastructure capacity assumptions, um, validate the outcome of the performance models um, and keep forming your what if analysis and keep, keep rerunning your models, keep re-executing your models until you met your non-functional requirements. Um, and once you met your non-functional requirements, you have then arrived at an optimal set of designs. You have then, um, you can then be assured you, uh, you, you basically arrived at an optimal infrastructure capacity requirement that you can then basically use um, going forward. So in a nutshell, the performance modeling process um, is about understanding your business requirements, understanding your non-functional requirements translating those non-functional requirements into application performance models um, uh, using a combination of analytical and simulation modeling techniques to validate your design assumptions, to validate your infrastructure capacity assumptions, then use um, these modeling techniques, uh, what if analysis, tweak your models, re-execute your models for different combinations and for different uh, combinations of your infrastructure capacity and infrastructure and application designs 
um, until you meet your non-functional requirements and eventually publish your recommendations and provide your recommendations to the application design and infrastructure design teams. So basically the performance modeling process is a process at the design stage in the software engineering or the performance engineering life cycle which is focused on giving you the ability to validate design assumptions, validate architectural assumptions, validate your uh, infrastructure capacity assumptions. Uh, performance modeling techniques give you the ability to validate the application performance early in the uh, 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 software development life cycle and as you move through the software development life cycle you can use a combination of different modeling techniques to validate the uh, uh, performance that uh, validate the performance of the application so what are the techniques available for performance modeling you have a combination of different performance modeling techniques available um, for purposes of this conversation let's um, look at the three different buckets you have statistical modeling techniques simulation modeling techniques and analytical and mathematical modeling techniques now again we'll go into each one of these in detail in future uh, presentations and future tutorials for now let's just focus on um, the the concepts let's just focus on understanding why you would use a given set of modeling techniques um, for a particular engagement or, or, or how you would decide on a given set of, on using a given set of modeling techniques now statistical modeling techniques are generally used for applications for which you have a lot of production data available statistical modeling techniques are offer you a set of industry standard off-the-shelf more techniques statistical modeling techniques that are focused on identifying relationships between existing um, workload metrics between um, um, uh, existing infrastructure workload metrics so statistical modeling techniques offer you the ability to explore your data um, statistical modeling techniques offer you the ability to explore relationships between existing workload metrics the objective of statistical modeling techniques is to basically understand the performance understand the performance of your application and forecast the performance of your application using a combination of different industry standard modeling techniques now statistical modeling techniques as i was mentioning <coughs> are usable for, can only be used for applications for which you have a lot of production data available you need business workload data stuff like transactions per second messages per second um, you need infrastructure workload data like cpu utilization memory utilization etc um, you have a combination of modeling techniques time series data visualization analysis time series forecasting using exponential smoothing techniques time series forecasting using moving average techniques time series forecasting using arima modeling um, simple regression and multiple regression modeling techniques. Now, statistical modeling techniques um, are, are, are easily available. There are numerous scientific packages available out there that offer you the ability to extract data, manipulate data, ETL data into, your, into the modeling tools and use a combination of different modeling techniques to understand and validate the performance of your application. Um, simulation modeling techniques. Um, simulation modeling techniques uh, are, are uh, give you the ability to to simulate the performance of the application and analytical modeling techniques basically give you the ability to build an, a, a mathematical model based on a, a bunch of assumptions now um, <coughs> simulation modeling techniques generally tend to be a lot more simpler to use however analytical and mathematical modeling techniques uh, uh, provide you the ability to quickly set up performance models for the system. Now, simulation modeling techniques can take take a bit of time to basically set up. Simulation modeling techniques um, are are very well known in the industry. There are numerous packages available out there for purposes of simulation modeling. Um, discrete event simulation modeling, a DES in short, is a, 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 a is a method that is frequently used. To, for, to simulate the mar uh, simulate performance of an application, Markov's chains, Petri nets, these are different uh, techniques available to users. Now, simulation modeling techniques per se do not make any assumptions with regards to the behavior of the system, unlike the analytical or mathematical modeling techniques. 
the analytical and mathematical modeling techniques um, namely queuing theory queuing networks universal scalability law operational theory little's law are based on a whole lot of assumptions or characteristics of systems um, that are assumed to exist <coughs> however uh, analytical modeling techniques are a lot more easier to implement they're a lot more easier to 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 get up and running with um, but <coughs> you you make numerous assumptions about the characteristics of the systems simulation modeling techniques however um, take a bit longer to set up and uh, simulation modeling techniques do not make assumptions about um, do not make those many assumptions I should say about the uh, behavior of the systems rather simulation modeling techniques are create set up a, a set of containers <coughs> and allocate resources within those containers that can be used for purposes of uh, simulation modeling so we we look in uh, forthcoming sessions we look at the different modeling techniques in detail however for now you have a combination of analytical modeling techniques simulation modeling techniques and statistical modeling techniques um, statistical modeling techniques more useful for systems at production for systems at svt for systems for which you have a lot of production data available analytical um, or mathematical modeling techniques and simulation modeling techniques are useful um, for systems at design stage for systems at build where you don't really have a lot of production data available <coughs> so what are the challenges involved in performance modeling the challenges involved generally consist of uh, challenges in obtaining the non-functional requirements for the given application challenges obtaining resources from the application design and infrastructure design teams to assist you with modeling and what if analysis now as a performance modeling analyst as a practical performance analyst you might have the ability to build performance models but eventually at the end of the day to be able to build relevant performance models you need a good understanding of the application you need a good understanding of the application design the infrastructure design the infrastructure capacity assumptions um, and obtaining resources relevant resources and SMEs is important to be able to uh, build relevant performance models challenges obtaining design tools for performance modeling now whether you've chosen analytical design techniques analytical modeling techniques simulation modeling techniques or statistical modeling techniques the uh, tools the scientific tools that are required are, are very expensive um, most organizations in my experience do not have access to these tools you end up using excel sheets which are very very painful um, inaccurate to a great extent and highly error prone now you could automate your performance models uh, you could build automated uh, 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 performance models um, or you could basically script a whole lot of these uh, performance modeling techniques into your excel sheets and automate uh, the execution of the models but as, as soon as the the amount of data that these models that the excel sheets have to deal with increases um, you start getting into a whole lot of performance issues with the performance modeling tools themselves um, uh, so the challenge is is, is obtaining uh, the uh, uh, obtaining relevant performance modeling tools understanding what tools are relevant for your particular set of modeling tasks um, and and using the relevant performance modeling tools so unfortunately in this space uh, performance modeling tools um, are hard to come by and are pretty expensive lack of industry standard tools to analyze model and visualize data for purposes of performance modeling now unfortunately in the performance engineering space um, you we haven't really seen vendors provide a set of standard uh, agree on a set of standard tools uh, to do anything and, and performance modeling is no different I mean the the the, <coughs> the it's pretty shocking to see the uh, lack of standards in uh, software performance engineering the lack of standards across the development life cycle from a performance engineering standpoint and again from a performance modeling perspective there are no standards mm, it is up to you as a practical performance analyst to understand the modeling concepts to understand the scientific modeling tools available out there um, and work with your customers uh, work with your organizations in procuring the relevant tools that you could use for purposes of performance modeling um, challenge convincing people on the usefulness of performance modeling techniques um, obviously because you you at this stage at the design stage because you do not have access to a lot of production data you can't use the statistical modeling techniques 
um, and using a bunch of mathematical equations or using simulation models to forecast performance of the application tends to raise eyebrows. Um, you, so as a practical performance analyst, it is important that you understand these concepts, you understand the um, modeling techniques in detail um, and, can, and, and have the ability to stand in front of the audience and, 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 and convince them on the usefulness and the ability of your modeling techniques um, to be able to predict the performance of the application. And uh, again, lack of capable resources to assist with data extraction, visualization, analysis, and modeling. So this is in a nutshell is the challenges involved in performance modeling. What are the deliverables from a performance modeling standpoint? So at the end of the day, you used a combination of different performance modeling techniques to validate performance of the application, to validate your architectural assumptions, your design assumptions, your infrastructure capacity assumptions. You've done a whole lot of performance, uh, what if analysis to validate these assumptions, go back to the design teams, provide them recommendations, come back, tweak your models. Um, and eventually you have determined the right design metrics, you, you uh, right metrics from a design perspective, the appropriate metrics from a capacity perspective. So you, you, your modeling report would basically validate your design non-functional requirements, validate that your designs meet your non-functional requirements, validate that your infrastructure capacity assumptions are right and they meet your non-functional requirements. Um, any design recommendations that you want to provide to the application teams would be included in your, in your reports. Any uh, recommendations to the infrastructure design teams would be included in your rec reports. And at the end of the day, you would also like to provide recommendations from performance testing, monitoring, and capacity management standpoint. You're on a list of tools um, that you have access to. Some of the, most of these tools, every all of these tools listed on this slide are open source tools. Um, feel free to look them up. Feel free to download them. Feel free to use them. Unfortunately, none of these tools are um, <coughs> um, are easy to use. They require um, a good understanding of m the the different modeling techniques. You will have to invest significant time and energy in understanding the statistical modeling techniques, analytical modeling techniques, and simulation modeling techniques before you start using these tools. However, JMT or Java modeling tools is an open source toolkit available to you that offers you a combination of different analytical uh, models um, and simulation models. You have queuing networks, uh, MVA or mean value analysis of queuing networks in Markov's chains, which, which gives you the ability to validate your design assumptions, um, build a con model of your system and forecast the uh, performance of the particular system. Um, SIMPI is a discrete event simulation modeling engine written in Python. Um, JMT or Java modeling toolkit of course is a Java based toolkit. SIMPI is a Python based toolkit. <coughs> SIMPI is an excellent discrete event simulation modeling toolkit um, uh, uh, written in Python. Of course there's a lot of programming involved um, in, um, in, building the no in building your system, designing your system and then executing it to understand what the design as, uh, limitations are. However, um, SIMPI is uh, very flexible, it's easy to get up and running with. Um, unfortunately, limitations are you need to understand Python, you need to be um, um, good at, uh, you need to understand discrete event simulation modeling um, and you need to basically set up your system um, using uh, SIMPI before you, um, you, you start uh, doing any kind of modeling. Um, and finally, you got R. R is one of the best uh, one of the best data visualization packages um, I've seen. Um, R is an excellent package for statistical modeling. You got a whole lot of packages available out there um, that that you could use for purposes of statistical modeling. Um, uh, uh, we probably focus. I mean, there are numerous R tutorials available out there, and it's it's completely. Um, out of scope <laughs> it's it, it the amount of R documentation out there is just amazing I would recommend you look up R and, and, and look up the relevant R modules that might be useful to you unfortunately with use you, uh, for any of these tools you have to understand the modeling techniques in detail you have to understand you have to have a, a background in programming um, and you have to basically understand the modeling concepts and the tools really well to be able to use them However, in future, uh, in future uh, tutorials, we will delve into the details of these different modeling techniques and see how we might use these tools to model the performance of the application. 
so thanks for taking the time and uh, and 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 listening to um, this session on uh, performance modeling concepts we hope you um, you've learned uh, uh, you you understood the importance of performance modeling um, you but you you understood the different modeling techniques available to you across um, the development cycle and the usefulness of the different performance modeling techniques in forecasting the performance of the application we request you to take um, a, take a few minutes um, use uh, the social media icons on the side to share the content with uh, your peers recommend the practical recommend practical performance analyst to your peers um, uh, talk to your peers about performance and help them understand the importance of performance and at the end of the day uh, the more people understand about performance, the more your customers understand the p about performance, uh, the lesser performance issues uh, all of us have. Um, thanks for taking the time and listening to us. Uh, um, and until next time, cheers.